What's up guys, it's Endymion, and in today's video, I want to explore another aspect of Elden Ring's lore that I find incredibly interesting. I want to speak of the beings known as the Omen, and what they represent, and why their accursed forms might mean something more. The Omen are beings born with accursed blood, resulting in their ogre-like appearances and their distinct twisted horns that grow from their heads and their bodies. The Omen are considered to be cursed beyond redemption from the moment of their birth, and are largely shunned if not outright killed by their own families or communities. The ones that do survive are exiled or hidden away to live miserable lives of solitude as they're kept away from civilization for simply being who they are. The omen are considered to be abominations, and when a child is found to be an omen, in commoner villages these children undergo violent operations against their own will to have their horns severed, but this usually ends with the child dying from their injuries. In terms of omens born into higher class families, or royalty, these omens keep their horns, but they are hidden away deep underground so their existences are kept a secret to the general population, most likely in fear of their families being discovered having given birth to such devils and the political or cultural implications that could lead from it. As we know in Elden Ring, there are two major boss fights with the Omen. One is mandatory for the story in Margit the Fell Omen, who eventually reveals himself to be Morgoth the Omen King, and the other is an optional fight which is Mog deep underground. Morgoth and Mog are actually twin brothers born to Queen Merica the Eternal and the very first Elden Lord, Horalu, or better known as Godfrey, the first Elden Lord. The reason the Omen are born can be attributed to certain conditions. Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, lost his connection to the grace of the Greater Will during his crusade against the giants in the Forbidden Lands. This loss of grace coincided with the birth of Morgoth and Mog, leading to the twins becoming Omens. So it's heavily considered, although it could be a theory, but that when individuals who are lost to the grace of the greater will could have a much higher chance to give birth to children that are seen in the eyes of the greater will which created the Elden Ring as not being worthy of existing in the first place. The tragedy of being an omen is that these individuals never chose this path for themselves but were simply born into a life of bleak existence. The perfumers of the royal capital of Landell took it upon themselves to create perfumes and potions to rid the omen of their curses, but this would ultimately fail. And so the perfumers would create their own elite group of executioners called the Omen Killers, who you can clearly guess were assembled and trained for the sole purpose of ridding the lands between of omens by killing them the moment their existence was discovered. Many items in game detail what the Omen Killers were built around, such as the Omen Smirk Mask, which states, Mask with long, hideously twisted horns worn by the Omen Killers. The visage is carved in the image of the evil spirits that haunt the Omen in their nightmares. According to the Omen Killer robe, the order was created by the original warrior who wanted to end all the Omens, which was a being named Rolo, who was also a perfumer of Landell, likely meaning Rolo worked alongside their perfumer colleagues and saw the only logical solution was not to cure the Omen, but to simply end them. This leads to another weapon, which is grotesquely covered in the severed horns of Omen children and adults alike, called Great Omen Killer Cleaver, which states, The blade of this huge, loathsome cleaver compromises a row of amputated Omen horns. Weapon of slaughter wielded by Omen Killers. The hideous horns cause blood loss, adding vibrant colors to the ongoing mayhem. Yikes. What is interesting and equal parts puzzling is that all the Omen reports seeing nightmarish dreams of twisted spirits, which as I just read is what the Omen killers fashioned their masks to look like, likely to terrify their prey during the chase. Whether these nightmares are the conception of some outer god who claims the Omen as their own, I just cannot say as of now. But the ogre-like designs, the constant growths of malformed horns, lead me to believe that the Omen, like their name suggests, are signs of something truly despicable and evil that could eventually spill into the lands between. However, the true tragedy of the Omen is that they're simply persecuted for existing, 
and due to their unknown natures and monstrous appearances, are hunted in fear that their curse can spread. The omen enemies that linger in the sewers of Landale are likely all royal members of long-forgotten houses that were expelled by their families in fear of retribution by the citizens of Landale and beyond. It's... it's really sad, actually. However, I also want to talk a little bit about one NPC in the game called the Dung Eater. You might know him. To put it simply, the Dung Eater is one of the most disturbing and gross characters from software has ever made, and that's saying something. It's largely hinted at that the Dung Eater is in fact an omen, and his existence is solely to spread the curse of the omen upon as many living beings as he possibly can in retaliation for how his kind is seen. There's a great thread on Reddit from user Randoman which compiled various dialogue and such about Dung Eater and more, so I'd like to reference some of that dialogue here. When speaking to the Dung Eater when he's in the round table hold by the Bell Merchants, he can say, and I quote, Countless, I have killed and countless I have defiled, and soon the fruits will be born. Hundreds will be reborn cursed, and they'll bear thousands of cursed children who will bear tens of thousands more. A few of those will be born just like me, and they'll kill and defile and bless in my stead. It actually gets even worse when looking at the seedbed curse item, and its description gives us a startling revelation regarding the omen, and I quote, Curse grown on a corpse killed and defiled by the dung eater, a tender pox afflicted with omen horns. The dung eater cultivates the seedbed curse on corpses. By doing so, he prevents dead souls returning to the Erd Tree, leaving them forever cursed, one of the most loathsome things found in the lands between. So, this is very interesting. What this means is that the Omen are, by all accounts, immortal and cannot die from disease, old age, or perhaps even death itself. Instead, the Omen suffer for eternity as their bodies turn more and more twisted and ogre-like. But the single biggest reveal here is that the Omen cannot be reborn through the Erd Tree. They suffer in agony for eternity, unable to escape their pain. As we know, when you die or reload an area, the enemies return because they are reborn by the Erd Tree. But this paints a bleak picture for the Omen in the sewers or around Landale. Cause if you kill an Omen and then go to a Site of Grace to fight them again, they haven't died from your previous battle with them. They're living with the scars and damage you inflicted on them from the previous fight. And they're fighting you, again, still reeling in the pain from their previous defeat. And no matter how many times you down them, however many wounds you reopen, they keep on existing, living in torment. Yikes, dude, that's brutal. So when we see the Dung Eater being hanged in the beginning of the game, it's futile. He's being tortured, stabbed, and if you look at his armor, he has multiple shaved off stumps all over his body, which is just like an omen who's had their horns removed. So in conclusion, let's recap what we've learned. The curse of the omen refuses those with it to be reborn by the Erd Tree. They must suffer for eternity, they're haunted by nightmares of evil spirits, they're excommunicated and forgotten by their own families, and they are persecuted for something out of their control from birth. And the Dung Eater has taken it upon himself to curse as many as inhumanly possible in revenge for how society has treated his kind. Lord knows how much worse this omen curse can get. Maybe we'll see it in the future, but for now, that's what I've got on the omen curse. So what do you think of it? Did I get anything wrong? Let me know in the comments. I'll be doing videos on the Formless Mother, Morgoth, and more as I find their stories really interesting and worthy of their own videos. So please like, subscribe, and share the video to give my life meaning. Thank you very much. And thank you to my patrons for their undying support. It means so much, you have no idea. And... I'm Endymion. Thanks for watching everyone and thanks for the support on the Astel Voidborn video. I really appreciate it. It's awesome. I'll see you in the next one.